Okay, so we're thinking about animal welfare. Now, there's two main discussions to be had around about animal welfare. That is an economical and an ethical discussion. Economical discussion is thinking about anything to do with money and this is really thinking about the fact that if we want improved animal welfare then it's going to mean higher costs. So looking for improved welfare this will mean higher costs. However, if animals have improved welfare, then we tend to get improved livestock. So by putting in more money, we might actually get um, an improved livestock and therefore improved security out. So it's a bit of a balance between how much we pay um, and are willing to pay in order to get a quality product. The ethical arguments about animal welfare are simply a balance of food security and sufficient welfare for the animals. So it's food security versus sufficient welfare. So there's an ethical argument to say that um, animals should be treated correctly, they should be free from disease, they should be able to move around, they should have adequate access to food. However, we have to balance that against the need for food for humans. So if there is a greater or very demanding or um, an emergency need for food for humans, then we could potentially accept a lower standard of welfare for animals if we're weighing this up ethically. Now, when we're thinking about animal welfare, you need to know four indicators of bad welfare in animals. So we'll put them over here. So four indicators of per welfare. Okay, and I like to use this abbreviation RAMS to try and remember these. So if we spell this out, uh, R A M S. So the R is for reproductive or parental failure. So any animals that are failing to breed or are not looking after their offspring properly are indicating that they are being poorly looked after. Abnormal activity levels. And this is also a sign of poor animal welfare. So this could be in the form of increased activity levels. So hyperaggression. or decreased activity levels, such as excess sleep. All right, um, so the M then is for misdirected behavior. And this is any normal uh, behavior that the animal would normally carry out, but it's doing it to such an extent as it's causing harm. So an example of misdirected behavior could be um, chickens over plucking their feathers and ending up with not enough feathers because they're just repeatedly doing it. So normal behavior causing harm. And the S is for stereotyping. And this is any repeated behavior that the animal's doing which seems quite meaningless. So it might be 
continuous chewing in horses or uh, continuous licking, repetitive licking um, a dog might do. So a sort of repetitive, meaningless behavior. So we've got rams. If the animals are doing any of these four things, it's a sign of poor animal welfare. All right, so there's our four indicators of poor welfare. We've got our discussions around animal welfare. And the last thing we need to know about then is a little bit about ethology. Which is the study of animal behaviour. Uh, now, there's a few things scientists can do when they're studying animal behaviour. The first thing they can do is to create an ethogram. And ethograms are just diagrams showing what an animal gets up to in its day-to-day -day, um, behaviours. So it might be a pie chart or a bar chart or something like that to show diagrammatically what an animal is doing. Scientists can also carry out preference tests. And this is a scientific experiment to find out what a particular animal's um, preferred behaviour is. So you might want to find out what type of food chickens prefer, for example. So you'll set out uh, an experiment, control all the variables, and have two different types of food for the chicken to pick from. And whichever one it eats more of, it prefers that food. The last thing we need to know about for ethology is um, motivation. And motivation is a measure of how much an, an animal wants to carry out a particular task. So if it has to go through um, a process in order to get food, for example, uh, motivation is measuring what it's willing to go through in order to get to the food. So if the animal's hungry, its motivation is going to be high. If it's not hungry, if it's just eaten, the motivation is going to be low. All right, so that sums up everything we need to know about animal welfare.